Welcome to Pedal with Power. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to be installing these Tannis Tire Armor inserts on my Electric XP 2.0. Now, this will be the same installation for like a Rad Power bike or an Aventin or just about any bike that has a hub drive motor. These are liners that are going to go inside the tire and they're going to help stop flats. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> So as you can see, I got my electric XP. I highly recommend if you're going to try to do this, that you do it with a bike stand. This is the Park Tool PCS 9.3. It's an awesome home bike stand. Supports the bike really good. Um, <clears throat> the tools that you're going to need are going to be a couple of tire levers, four millimeter wrench. You can use a multi-tool if you have one. Um, 18 millimeter for the back, but I only have a 19, so 19 works too, and a 15 for the front. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your four millimeter and you're going to want to get this little bolt right in here and unscrew that guy. And just go ahead and take that right on out. Ah, here we are. Now, you go around to the other side, and there's another one. So we're going to take that one out too. We don't want either of those in. So these are little extra safety bolts. Well, actually this one's kind of a safety bolt. <clears throat> This one here helps bolt in this little cage because these derailers are kind of cheap and easy to bend and break. So once you got those off, grab your 18 or 19. Take this little cap off. So that side's exposed. This side has this little cap on it. So you just pull that guy down and off. You can actually kind of weave this thing all the way around. And actually, before we do that, there is a zip tie under here that you're going to want to cut. These are not the best to cut this with. Cut that zip tie. Unplug the motor. Now you can wiggle this thing all the way down. <clears throat> okay. So holding the wheel up, you're going to want to get a good bite on this bolt right here and start loosening it up. Now this does not have to come off all the way. But it does need to loosen up quite a ways. So once that one's getting loose, now you want to make sure and really grab the wheel because once you loosen this one, the wheel's going to want to come off. So loosen this one way up. Then you're going to kind of want to shake the wheel a little. And this little cage fell off. There's that thing. Okay, now once you have this big wheel off, you're gonna undo the valve cap and grab your four millimeter and let all the air out. Oh, nothing like the smell of stale inner tube air. I always think that smells like, like you're at the fish market or something. Kind of gross. So once you got a good amount of air out, you don't need to let all of it out. Clear off your work area. I'm gonna set this on the side. Grab one of your tire levers. And you always kind of want to go opposite the valve. These things sit on here so loose, pretty easy just to kind of pry it right off. 
So now you can see we have one side off. Now what I'm going to do is grab the tube out from the valve. And once you have the valve out, you can kind of work the tube out. Now you want to be sure not to drop this wheel on your foot. But anytime you're working on bikes, you should be using good closed-toed shoes. I am in house slippers, so technically they're closed-toed. What's that? Oh, zip tie. <clears throat> so, get this tube all the way out of here. set that aside and then you want to see how part of this back bead on mine came out we want to make sure that that's all the way in so we just have one side of the bead out working that thing around there now I grab our armor open her up now so this is the 20 by 3 to 4 inch and with these big rims, I'm going to see if it'll just fit in there. The instructions are going to tell you to trim part of this out, but I'm going to try to make it fit without trimming it. We'll see how it goes. So I'm just kind of push this guy in here and slowly work it around. Now you got that all in there. <clears throat> so then you want to push the inside. Oh, there's that reflector. That thing can come out. So we'll get the inside of that pushed in. And just go all the way around. All right. So now we have one whole side on. So this will be the trickier part. So now we got to get the tube back in there. So you want some air in your tube, but not a whole lot. And you're going to want to start with the valve part. So we find the valve hole again. You can see that right there. Kind of lay this out. So now I'm going to shove this part of the tube in. Sometimes it's almost easier if you get some of this going a little bit here. So now you can see, if you can see, hopefully you can. We've got the valve right here, hole right there. So I'm going to push this thing down through. Get that come out of that hole. Just like that. So now I'm kind of holding that. So you can see that's kind of sticking out there. Now we want to get more of the tube in. As you can see, these are not the easiest things to install. But keep pushing the tube in. Get that valve in there nice and good. Now we really push the tube in the rest of the way. You can see I got a lot of air in my tube, so I'm going to let some more out. So we deflate that tube nice and good. Push it in the rest of the way. And as the tube starts to go in there, so once you got most of the 
tube pushed in. I want to go back to our valve, make sure that that's nice and straight. Now we want to push in the armor. Now you can see the, just the armor pushing in. Kind of work that around. Trying to keep that valve as straight as you can. And then just keep going around, pushing in the armor. Until it's all pushed in. Okay, so now once the armor's all in there nice and good, let all the air out of the tube. Because this is going to be the part where now you got to push the actual tire in. So kind of starting at the valve, you want to push it in and start working your way down. And as you can see, the bead starts going around. Once you get about halfway, you flip this guy around and kind of push on this thing. So that's nice and down. And then keep pushing the tire the rest of the way. Now once you get to this little bit left, you kind of want to push with both thumbs and really put some, put some thumb into that last part. Then you can see that it's all on there nice and good. So now you just grab your floor pump. And air it back up. Yeah. 20. 20 is money. I don't think anybody says that. Except I just did. Okay. So now, now that you got air back in, you want to check and make sure this little bead line, nice and even on that side. Nice and even on this side. Put our little cap back on. And he thought that was tricky. So now it's got to go back on the bike. <clears throat> so this gets a little tricky. You got all these little things in here. So these little guys need to be on the outside here, right up against the nut. Same on this side. And you'll see as this axle rotates, so do those. So we know that they're pointing kind of straight up right there. And then this little guy is on the inside. So once you get those all lined up straight, you're going to want to put this in, take the chain. Now the chain's got to come all the way around the wire and up in there, and it's going to sit underneath this pulley. So I kind of pull the back of the derailleur down. That gets a part of the way there. So now we want to turn these and line them up so that they're in line. And now what you also have to do is make sure the rotor is going into the caliper between the pads. So you kind of have to do all of that, which is not simple. I do put my leg up. One little trick that I'll show you though that helps is to actually lower this guy just a little bit. Now Get your spacers all back together. So get that guy through. Put this back on there. Make sure that's on the outside, that's on the inside. 
And these guys are pointing up. Now you're kind of guiding it into the rotor here. And once it's all the way in, you kind of crank these down a little hand tight. I'll see that it's not all the way up in there. There we go. So now grab one of these. So now is when I'm propping it up with my leg here. That's why I lowered it. So getting this thing back in here is a trick. So holding the wheel up the whole time or this whole thing will fall out. You can get that little guy started. Take your other four mil. So this thing has to go back in there too. This thing is also not necessary at all. So you don't need to put that back in if you don't want to. I'm not going to. All it does is protect that thing. But I guess for the sake of this, we'll put it back in. So screw these two guys down, but not all the way. But once they're in, you can let go of the wheel. Then in order to get this thing back on, you need to unscrew this. Slip it back in there and then screw it back down. So now we're going to grab our 18 again, slash 19. <clears throat> and you're going to want to push the wheel so that it's fully up. I use my leg underneath. You can see that it'll actually slide a bit if you don't. And then start tightening these guys down. We want to make sure that thing's kind of pointing down. But obviously, it spins a lot. So once that one's pretty tight, it doesn't need to be all the way yet. Make sure the wheel's in there nice and tight. And we're going to tighten this guy down. Just keep twisting until it gets tough. Then you're going to want to really cinch it in there pretty good. Now we can go back over to this guy here. Now you should be able to hold this and tighten this. Because you can see as I tighten this, it wants to turn this guy. So now I'm holding that and I'm kind of pushing up on the tire with my knee and tightening this guy. All happy dappy. Now the one thing you'll notice is almost any time you take your wheel off and put it back in on one of these, these cheapo brakes is now rubbing. But we can readjust that too. So grab this little cap and weave it back on up here. Somehow, push that back on, grab this little plastic cap, cover that thing up, and then you'll see this little safety screw. Now we want to make sure these are nice and tight. So 
same on this side. Now that that's all in there, this little guy has a little arrow. I don't know if you can see that. And this one has an arrow. So point the arrows at each other and gently pop that guy back together. Then you'll want to re-zip tie this here, but I didn't bring a zip tie with me. So normally I would just use some tape, but you definitely don't want that just flopping around. So usually you would re-zip tie it into this guy, but you can also just tape it to this guy too. That works. Um, so that's about it for the back one. So I can try to show you here how to readjust that. For this one, you need a five millimeter. So I'm going to use my handy tool. Just going to loosen this top one. Bring this guy over. Just adjusted these things too. So adjusting brakes is a whole nother video. So that's better, but the bottom one's rubbing a little. Now we're all good. So when I can, I'll do another video on how to adjust these, how to change out the pads. There is a way to change out your pads without having to take your wheel off. Um, we can go through that in a different video. This video is just about putting these Tannis liners in. So now the back one's done. Now I got to do the front one. So the front one, you're going to need your 15. And we're also going to need to rotate this thing a bit. Make sure that's snug. So I won't go through a whole process because it's this one's actually a lot easier than the back one and the, the installation's exactly the same, but to remove it, use your 15 millimeter for the front. If you have a ratcheting one, it's much easier. You just need to back this nut off a ways because inside here, there's these little safety washers that hook in. In case your wheel gets all loose while you're riding, supposedly it won't fall off. And kind of the easiest way, sometimes you can dig those out, but if you just kind of jiggle it a little and you want to pop these little hooks out, same on this side. And loosen it just a ways. That one will just slide straight down. So these are those little hook washers. So if you just loosen this up a little ways, these are still going to be hooked into these holes here. You won't be able to get the wheel out. Then basically just repeat what I did with the back wheel and put it back together. So hopefully if you're feeling brave and you want to do all that, um, I would just ask your local bike mechanic if you'll do it, pay them, whatever. This is not the easiest thing to do in the world, but if you got some time, hopefully a bike stand, uh, you should be able to do it yourself if you're mechanically inclined. Anyway, hope you like this video and stay tuned for more.